Hello people of the internet, welcome back. This video is going to be the first of a new series called Unsung Heroes. Uh, I wanted to call it Absolute Legends, but my mum said that wasn't very professional. So we're going with Unsung Heroes. It's going to be about people who are have done really amazing things, but aren't super well known. Um, and this episode is going to be about Frances Oldham Kelsey. I'm going to put a picture of her on the screen. She was a drug reviewer for the FDA and I'll talk more about her. She was born on the 24th of July in 1914 in a town called Cobby Hill in British Columbia. She graduated high school at the age of 15 and attended the Victoria College, which is now the University of Victoria in Canada. Um, she then went to McGill University where she received both a BSc and an MSc in Pharmacology and she graduated in 1935. Uh, she then applied in writing for a role, um, a graduate role at the University of Chicago in the United States. Basically what happened was um, the 1930s weren't a, an era for equal opportunities. Um, the guy when she applied misread her name as Francis with an IS at the end and thought she was a man so hired her because she didn't realise she was a woman that must have been awkward <laughs> that must have been so embarrassing when they found out what had happened but um, anyway she accepted and she got a job at the um, a graduate role at the University of Chicago and she started studying for her PhD um, in she started work there in 1936 and in 1938 she got her PhD and that's also the year where the United States Congress passed the Federal Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act. She first continued working at the University of Chicago and tried to find a synthetic cure for malaria and also during this time she met Fremont Ellis Kelsey and they got married in 1943 and then in 1954 she moved to South Dakota and taught pharmacology at the University of South Dakota until 1957. In 1960, she was then hired by the FDA in Washington DC to be a drug reviewer. So her job was to check all the drugs that had applied to be sold in the US and make sure that they were safe to go on sale. One of her first assignments was from a company called Richardson Merrill and the drug that she was supposed to be reviewing was thalidomide and it was already by this point approved for use in 20 different countries including the United Kingdom and Canada but when she actually looked at the research she realised that there wasn't actually a lot of evidence to prove it was safe. It was marketed as a cure for morning sickness during pregnancy but there weren't actually any studies to show that it was safe for the fetus during pregnancy and there was also a study from England that showed that it may cause peripheral neuronitis and the company hadn't really looked into this study. So she refused, she refused to pass it until she had more evidence that it was safe. The drug company kept pressuring her to pass it, um, but her and her assistants said, no, no, there's not enough evidence, we need more evidence. And then, um, in the next, next couple of years, a lot of babies in Europe started being born with really severe disabilities and some died and it was linked to use, to the mothers using this drug thalidomide during pregnancy. Um, turns out it affected the growth of blood vessels of um, fetuses in utero and often caused babies to be born with serious deformities of their limbs, um, but it could also affect the brain, it could cause some really really nasty effects and Francis, when this came out, Francis Oldham and her assistants who were called Oyama Jiro and Lee Geisma um, were heralded as heroes, everyone was so glad that they were basically the only people in the world that didn't, that realised this drug could be dangerous before um, anything bad actually happened, I mean it had happened in other countries but before it got onto the market in the United States and this led to something called the Kefauver Harris Amendment that was passed in 1962 and it basically changed the 
Food, Drugs and Cosmetics Act to be much stricter to make sure that drugs had to be proved and to be really safe and effective before they got onto the market. She also received the President's Award for Distinguished Distinguished Federal Civilian Service um, on August the, 7th, 9, August the 7th, 1962 by John F. Kennedy. Um, she continued to work for the FDA until, until 2005 when she was 90. So she retired at the age of 90, quite impressive, and lived until the 7th of August 2015 when she passed away um, at the age of 101 less than 24 hours after she was presented with the insignia of the member of the Order of Canada by the Ontario's Lieutenant Governor Elizabeth Dowelswell. Yes, yeah, so she is an absolute legend and I didn't know about her until, until I started researching for this video. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you look forward to seeing other videos about not very well-known people that are actually super interesting. Thank you for watching. Bye!